Macrophytes are plants that can be seen with the naked eye. Aquatic macrophytes are found in water bodies, either along the shoreline or fully submerged. Aquatic macrophytes are located in the littoral zone of a water body. The littoral zone is divided into segments based upon what types of plants inhabit a given location. In the upper littoral zone, there are emergent plants. Emergent plants are rooted underwater but have exposed stems and leaves and need to be strongly rooted to withstand the wind and waves found in shallow waters because they do not have the water to support their structure. The middle littoral zone is generally dominated by floating leaved plants. These macrophytes are rooted to the lake bottom with leaves floating on the surface of the water. The floating leaves are attached to the roots by a flexible stem, allowing the macrophyte to withstand waves, yet gather sunlight and CO2 for photosynthesis. In Florida lakes, the deepest part of the littoral zone is called the lower littoral zone. However, this is usually not the case in other ecosystems because the bottom of the lake is too deep for light penetration. The lower littoral zone is where submerged plants are found. Submerged macrophytes grow completely underwater and their weight is fully supported by it. Thus, they do not invest much energy into structural support. Free floating zone includes macrophytes located on or just below the surface of the water body. This allows them to withstand waves but could be blown up by the water by strong gusts of wind. Aquatic macrophytes hold great importance because they provide habitats for a variety of species such as fish and invertebrates. They also stabilize soil and promote sedimentation by reducing water circulation, allowing decomposition of fine sediment and retaining coarse particulates of organic matter that would otherwise be in the water column. When trying to identify aquatic macrophytes, you can collect samples by clipping a part of the macrophyte or collecting the entire macrophyte. It is important to collect samples from species that are abundant in the ecosystem. Macrophytes can be identified using a dichotomous key. A dichotomous key consists of a series of choices that lead to the correct species. It is also important to note that you need a flowering specimen to identify it to the species level. Although many macrophytes are beneficial to an aquatic ecosystem, some species may be of nuisance or invasive, causing harm to an ecosystem. It may be necessary to remove such species. There are multiple methods used to remove nuisance macrophytes, each having their own advantages and disadvantages. The four categories of aquatic plant removal include physical removal, biological control, chemical control, and habitat alteration. Physical removal consists of manually removing the species from the ecosystem by hand or with the machine. This is usually effective because it causes the least amount of harmful impact. Some machines are designed to use physical means of removal, but this method is limited by cost and by time. Biological control involves introducing a select species, such as a fish, insects, or pathogens, that are used as a tool to manage or eradicate the targeted macrophyte. Oftentimes, the introduced species will also eat macrophytes not targeted for removal. While this method can be effective when used properly, it could possibly introduce a harmful species into the ecosystem, causing more damage. Chemical control involves the use of herbicides. This method is very effective at completely removing a species, but it is expensive and may cause irreversible damage to an ecosystem if not properly executed. Habitat alteration involves manipulating water level, light penetration, and or nutrients. This can be dangerous because habitat alteration can cause a negative disturbance in the flow of energy within an ecosystem. We hope this video helps better our understanding of macrophytes, terms associated with location of macrophytes in a lake, overview of management techniques, and their overall importance in our everyday lives. Thank you for watching.